stories. Welcome to NFL Primetime, presented by Jameson. Must be a Jameson. Please drink responsibly. Well, hi there, and I got to do it. Chris Berman, Booker McFarlane. It's a special Monday night edition of Wild Card Primetime. <laughs> we, uh, we have a, a troika, if you will. Two games Saturday, two games Sunday, two games Monday. And every time you think you know something, you know nothing at all, Boomer. You, you know nothing at all, Boom. But here's the one thing about playoff football. It makes the cream rise to the top because that one word, pressure. Pressure. And, and we saw it certainly yeah. over the weekend. And we only had one close game so far. Could Monday bring a couple of close games? Well, look, Philadelphia started 10-1. Yeah. They almost won the Super Bowl. Tampa, who knows? Your life after Tom. But all of a sudden, coming in, Philly 1-5, Tampa 5-1. and one. But, but really? Philly, they're going to struggle in the new sombrero. Here we go with the Bucks, the champs of their division, and the wild card Eagles. But Philly favored, but Tampa was ready. Their fans were ready. The Jolly Roger was ready. <laughs> and Baker Mayfield was ready, Booger. Right out. Boy, wide open to David Moore. A name that, and then we have a face mask penalty that makes it 37 yards. Baker. To the most sure-handed guy they've had, Mike Evans. Oh, you never see this. Uh, boom, you just knew that was a touchdown. He couldn't have walked it out there any better. The uncharacteristic drop, even the head coach Ty Bowles was surprised. Oh, so it's not going to work, huh? Well, you know what? I'm going to go to then more. Yeah. Give us some more. What? He goes right here, makes the move, and he could go all the way into the end zone. Maddox, Ricks, collide on the play. Philly giving themselves their own screen. Man-to-man -man defense, boom. The defenders run into each other, and Moore does the rest. Very poor tackling by the Eagles. Very poor. Uh, all night long, 10-0 Tampa Bay. Second quarter now, 13-0. Another Tampa field goal. Devontae Smith, the slim reaper, almost gets away. 31 yards, and the Eagles, for the first time, took them a quarter to get in the Bucks territory. Hurts, Smith, in front of the Bucks, dancing, trying his best. Of course, no A.J. Brown, so this would be the guy to first down. Hurts bringing a blitz is Todd Bowles. Going for Smith, but it's high, and they have to settle for an Elliott field goal, 13-3. Hurts. Well, Julio Jones. Oh! Julio Jones nailed and stayed down. Yeah, Julio got rock boom, will be evaluated for a concussion, and he would not return. No, well, they needed him, and the Tampa Bay defense. Yeah. Waking up the echoes of a couple <laughs> of previous <laughs> eras of Tampa yeah. Bay defense. Well, Hurts said, uh-oh, can I get protection? He did here. And there's the Reaper. 55-yard gain down to the five. We may have a ball game here. Hurts. It was tough tight end Dallas Goddard in the end zone. Philly with a touchdown. Bucks were off sides. So we're going to go for two from the one. Why not? It's the brotherly shove. But guess what? Tampa stopped it. Really good job by Vita Vea. Boom. He's 6'4 and about 350. He got lowered in Kelsey. Then the linebacker, KJ Brick, came over the top and pulled Hurts. May have gotten away with a face mask, but they didn't call it. Well, unbelievable. They it stopped the unstoppable yeah. play. So it stays at 16 9. Under two minutes to go in the half. Baker. Oh, here comes Brandon Graham getting a rush. So some of those veteran, and I mean veteran Eagle guys, can still bring it. And Mayfield takes exception afterwards. Tempers heating up. Bucks lead 69 at the half. Now, third quarter. We'll play action to White. Then to Chris Godwin, eight yards. Bucks starting a drive. Third and one from the 36. Milton Williams sacks Baker. They did get four sacks. So out of field goal range, Jalen Hurts says, oh, we forced a punt. What can I do? Nothing in the end zone. It's a safety. Whether it's illegal grounding or his knee might have been down, like the Bucks. Of course they make it a two-score game by the defense. Really good job all night by the defense. They brought pressure on Jalen Hurts all night long. 18-9. 
So two score game, thanks to the Bucks D. Trey Palmer, how many tackles are the Eagles gonna miss? Cut, go, all the Trey into the end zone, <laughs> touchdown. I mean, why? Boom, this may have been the poorest tackling game I've ever seen from a professional football team, and that's saying a lot. The Eagles did not tackle anyone tonight. 25 to nine, Bucks. Bucks? Early fourth quarter, the Bucks had more fun. Well, I mean, Hertz and Smith gave it a go. That's quite a play in front of three and Buck defenders. Third and 21. I mean, they average being like third and eight. I mean, you can't win like this. Checks down to Swift. He's 10 yards short of the first down. So Jake Elliott, who saw McLaughlin continuing his outstanding year, Tampa Bay. Elliott's kick is good, but the Eagles, the Bucks lined up offside. So I agree with this at 25-9. Let's see if he can pick up fourth and five. Answer, you can't. Carlton Davis. And again, another blitz by the Buccaneers. Carlton Davis one-on-one -on -one coverage. Really nice job of going up high point in the football. The Bucks secondary plays sticky man all night long. And then, now Mike Evans. I mean, it was the other guys. It was Palmer and Moore, but Evans 19 yards. Bucks want to put it away. They want to hammer it home. Mayfield, Evans, first down. Later. Mayfield, who haven't we heard from? Chris Godwin. Well, was that like a catch in center field or what? It's a really good job by Baker Mayfield. All out pressure. He knows he's going to get hit. Throw it up. The defender's one on one, and he loses track of Chris Godwin. Easy touchdown, and Baker is happy. Baker Mayfield, what a game for him. Yes, everybody had this. Bucks. At Lions, your old division, <laughs> right? The yeah. NFC North Here we go. division. So who knew Tampa Bay just hammered the Philadelphia Eagles, the defending NFC champions, out of the out of the playoffs, like with a whimper. And Tampa Bay doing what they did not do a year ago. They're moving on into the divisional round. And Lisa Salters afterwards. Baker, it's been three years since your last playoff win. Just what what has the wait been like? Um, we fought so hard to get to this point to get a chance to be in the playoffs, and I'm so proud of this team tonight. The way we came out and started fast, um, I just I'm so proud. And so we wanted to give ourselves a chance, and now we, we did just that. We can play better than we did tonight, but it's on to the next one, so we're on to Detroit. You've said that this is the most fun, the most comfortable you've been in such a long time. Just what felt good tonight with this offense? Just the communication throughout the week. Everybody was on the same page, knew what we were going to do offensively, schematically, and uh, came out and attacked. Uh, obviously got to make a few more plays overall on offense, but uh, we made more than enough to win tonight. So we start with Baker Mayfield. You saw the numbers, 22, 36, 337. So many Long plays yeah. may be designed for kind of shorter or medium plays. Tampa Bay just put the pedal to the metal and took it to the Eagles. Philly will get to Philly because they didn't look like they wanted right. to be there, and that's, that's a terrible thing to say. Tampa Bay, boy, are they hot at the right time. You know, Boom, sometimes we can become prisoner of the moment, and we can look at the Eagles, and they were playing bad. The Buccaneers were playing good. We can say, ah, don't worry about it. The Eagles will get right. No, we shouldn't have. We should pay, have paid attention to how these teams played down the stretch. The Buccaneers were outstanding. Baker Mayfield was the ultimate point guard tonight, distributing the football, getting the ball to his playmakers. And the Buccaneers play with a level of toughness, a level of physicality. They look quicker. They look more spry. They look like they wanted the game more than the Eagles. And they understood we're at home, and they fed off the home crowd, boom. And it's amazing how Baker Mayfield, a guy that came into the season – didn't even know if he was going to be the starting quarterback. Right. He had, to, he had to battle Kyle Trask for the job, wins the job. Now it's his football team, boom. And it's amazing how they rallied behind him as they go into the postseason. Well, there are lots of ways to look at that. I do want to say one thing before we get good. So, whereas a lot of the Eagles, and they're such proud veterans, yeah. and they're still really good players. You're Joe and Troy, everybody talk about it, right? Their offensive line, the mm -hmm. Brandon Grant, the Fletcher Coxes. But the, the, the old guard of the Tampa defense, which yeah. won the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. Jamel Dean had yes. 10 tackles. Levante Davis yes. was all over. Antoine Winfield had a great year. His punch out last week was maybe the reason that, that they got in. So they were old guard that stood up tall, and Phillies did not. No doubt. And, and it's how they did it. 
Todd Bowles know that he could come into this game and pressure uh, Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. They blitzed him all night long. Boom. The pressure on Jalen Hurts was outstanding. They made Jalen Hurts uncomfortable. Blitz after blitz. And even, even, boom, you and I were discussing, when they went four-man rush, they got pressure with just four guys yeah. up front. The pressure, the blitz package on Jalen Hurts was absolutely outstanding all night long. So you got to give a big credit to Todd Bowles. He and his defensive staff coached circles around Nick Sirianni and Brian Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Eagles. And, and also, we, we, we hinted at the other side. I mean, they Yards after catch or bad tackling. Well, one plus one <laughs> equals 50 yards, right? It seemed like all night long. I, it, it, may, it may have been the worst tackling game I've ever seen from, a, from a team. Something. And, and, and when they caught the football, I mean, it was one. It was two. It was three. It was four broken tackles every single play, boom. And it was from the opening snap. And defense is about effort and about want to. That's what tackling is all about. There's no, there, there's no magic formula. You see the guy, you go hit him, and you go 100 miles an hour, and you get him on the ground, boom. The Buccaneers had 157 yards after contact, boom. Mm. That's desire that is want to. Tampa wanted it more tonight than the Eagles. Yeah, I mean, they almost outgained them 2-1. to one. Yeah. I mean, I didn't see the final one in Philly the last, last couple of drives. For Philadelphia, uh, look, two years ago, they played in the wild card yeah. game. They were young. Yeah. And they were, they were horrible, and, and, and they learned from it. It was 31-15. Yeah. We're only two years later, and they're right back to what the heck happened. I, I don't know. I mean, they have proud veterans. I'm not going to knock any of those guys, but it's amazing that they never could put on the brakes for a team that was 10-1. and one. They lost two coordinators, boom, Gannon and Steichen, and it's amazing how the offense is going downhill. You hire a new, a, a new coordinator, and you, you kind of bench him. You bring in Matty Patricia. It wasn't the defense. There's something going on in that locker room. The quarterback didn't look healthy. I know A.J. Brown wasn't there tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if the owner, Jeffrey Lurie, has a long look at his coaching staff because this is a talented team. You don't go from 10-1, and one, boom, to finish the season 1-6. and six. There's something internal going on inside Philly. I don't know because I'm not in that locker room, but it just looked like, even Troy and Joe said, it looked like a team that didn't want to be there tonight. Yeah, one of the worst plus minuses in, in, in turnovers. Exactly. I mean, which is so unlike a defending NFC champ. Even like penalties, like five yard, in addition, yeah, yeah. just, 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 just really, really. So just like we all had it, two teams from the NFC North in the final four in the <laughs> NFC, and and none from the NFC East with Philadelphia and Dallas bounce out. Now you know, Boog, can it really be? Can it really be twenty one years ago that that Tampa Bay played? It was in Philly at the old Vet mm -hmm. and. Well, you remember this team, and defense brought it against Donovan McNabb, that's for sure, didn't they? And then, and of course, Brad, Brad Johnson, the key! <laughs> <laughs> and, and then to settle it, Hall of Famer, Rondé Barber went 90-plus yards and waved to the Eagles' sideline. You were on that team. Defense. It's amazing what happens this time of year, Boom, because offenses, uh, usually the weather's a little colder. OK, uh, the elements come into play. And so offenses can't do what they normally do. And defenses rise to the top. You saw that tonight with the Bucks defense. And it's good to see those memories of our old defense up in Philly. Well, and then you had like, like eight interceptions in the Super Bowl against, <laughs> against the Raiders in San Diego. So congratulations to the Bucks, Man, they go roaring into Detroit. That, that could be really a fun game. We'll talk about all the playoffs a little later. Now. The Buffalo Bills, they're a team on the come, yeah. obviously. Six and six, what's wrong with the Bills? Well, five and oh, coming into the playoffs. And yes, the Buffalo Bills hosting the Pittsburgh Steelers. Three and oh down the stretch. And there's our sound effects because it's the great white north. And but this was yesterday. You yeah. want to know why they didn't play uh, Sunday? That's why. In upstate New York, mm. hey, this is what we, ah. Who needs it? We'll stand the whole game. This is our seat. Yeah. Didn't we pay for it? You know what? We're Buffalo. We don't care. Josh Allen. They don't say the Pittsburghers are on top. Josh, warming up. Field look good. Bills look good. And one thing we thought might happen, the tight ends against the Steeler linebackers early on was a big part of the game. That's Dalton Kincaid. Well, this, of course, is Stephon Diggs. And then... The starting tight end until this year that he got hurt some, the rookie Kincaid, and that's Dawson Knox, 7 nothing Buffalo. Really nice job by Knox getting to the corner route. Pittsburgh blew the coverage. And they're enjoying the throw in the snow, and Mason Rudolph to George Pickens, but Teron Johnson, 
The ball comes loose. Terrell Bernard is on it. Ruled incomplete. Sean McDermott, we're going to challenge. What a great move early. Really good challenge, Boom. He caught the ball. He turned, which was a football move. He put the arm down, knocked it out. Challenge successful. Buffalo ball. And then, right away, we get ball. We get touchdown, says Josh Allen to Kincaid. So the two tight ends of score, 14 nothing Buffalo. Did we say tight end? Well, Rudolph, the Pat Fryer move. And Christian Bedford forces a fumble, but it's challenged by Buffalo. But they said they're out of bounds. The, the, the Bills could not get it. Close. Yeah, I never saw the angle that, yeah. yeah. Hmm. yeah. Now, nah, still keep the ball. Okay. We're, yeah, yeah. we're just here to report the news. <laughs> yeah. The challenge, no good. Yeah, okay. okay, we're done. Yeah. So, under 11 minutes to go in the second quarter. Deontay Johnson, but it's picked off by Kair Elam. So, everything going Buffalo's way. Really poor throw by Rudolph. That ball's got to be outside, almost out of bounds. He threw it inside. Interception. Third and five. Bills with their own 24. Allen to Diggs for a first down. He would, hey, I'm on the Pittsburgh side, though. Can I borrow that one? <laughs> Hey, you know, his friends. Uh, you got to be know, careful over there. Water? I, well, he did. He, the water wasn't frozen. That's the big news. Then Allen. This is unbelievable. What? Between Steelers. Wait a minute. A cold quarterback draw. 52 yards. And when you look at it again, I hope we do see it again. Dawkins. Deion Dawkins, the line. They were blocking like it was a screen pass. Maybe we'll see it later. Hey, here it is. Yeah, no doubt, Boom. You got to realize Josh Allen is 6'5", 240 pounds. How about the stop and start? He's running against DBs. No DB wanted to tackle him. Then he stands in the end zone lets everyone know how athletic he is. Joe Brady loves the call. Oh, yeah. He loved the call. He loved the execution even better than Allen, the Deontay Hardy, the hero. Hey, they might not have won the East had it not been his punt return in Miami where it was slightly warmer just a week ago. 34 yards. Huge first down for the Bills. Tyler Bass comes on to make it 24 nothing. But guess what? Montrevious Adams. Steelers. They don't give up. Recovered by Herbig. Sam Martin, the punter, the holder. Hurdy ended up coming back to the game later. But Steelers not giving up. And, and I love the fact that they blocked this punt, this extra uh, field goal boom, and now they're trying to get him the ball. Hunter pulls hamstring. That could be pivotal. Well, and Mason Rudolph said Johnson under two minutes to play. Steelers on the board. So like that, look, I know they were farther back all year long. How often did we see it? Waiting, 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 and then making a turnover to get in the game or win games. Got to give the Steelers credit. Rudolph, Johnson, 19-yard gain, third quarter. Bernard, the guy that played so well in, in replacing Milano, injured on the play. So now the Bills down another big defender. Steelers settle for a field goal. Yeah, you, you hate to see that go down, boom. He had to get carted off. Uh, it doesn't look good for him. No. 21 to 10, so maybe a game. Third and nine. Allen, time. Now being chased. Of course, we know no TJ Watt. Would the Steelers find it a tough time to win? Anybody would. Allen to Diggs, a game of 12. Joey Porter Jr., the fine young corner. Heat concussion protocol would not return. Yeah, you see him get hit in the head, boom. Had a couple of guys like that today. He grabbed the head after going and get it checked out. So, now, oh, tricky Steelers. They, they converted a third and really long, and then they set pickets around on a tricky play of 15 yards. But wait a minute, this game was supposed to be over. Mm. In Buffalo, Snow, Rudolph, Calvin Austin in the end zone. One score game, 24 17. Wow. How did this happen? <laughs> Under 10 to go now. <laughs> I love it on my sheet. It says Allen plows through a wide open. Right, that's what he did. Very good job. Way to go. Now, second if Allen goes up the middle, Miles Jack, he got flagged a few times. Yeah, boom, he was on the couch a month ago in his show. And then Allen says, Khalil Shakir. Gabe Davis ain't playing, we got, we got Zippy Khalil. Looking to move left and right. My goodness, what a play. 31-17, the Bills back up by two touchdowns. Hey, it's snow for everybody. Yeah, and just the extra effort there by Shakir, boom. Not willing to go down. He could have easily gone down, didn't go down. And the quickness on that turf from him showed. Five minutes to go, fourth and three, Pittsburgh. Own territory. Gotta go. Rudolph. Pickens. Slim Pickens there. Rudolph wants flag. Pickens wants flag. Pickens tosses helmet. Bills fans toss snowballs. And guess what? Guess what? We go from Taylor to Bill Elvis. 
I, I, I mean, you know what? Finally for Buffalo. Well, first of all, they win it 31 to 17. So congrats to them. Pittsburgh came back, did their best. Josh Allen, three touchdown passes. You saw it. He, uh, the Bills ran for 179. And the Bills finally will get Kansas City at home mm. in the playoffs or at all. And uh, afterwards, Dan Graziano. We love these tight end interviews with Dawson Knox. You got things going with the big touchdown catch in the first quarter. Jumped into the stands. How much fun did you have out there tonight? Man, that was fun. I didn't realize how much snow I was going to be sitting on. My butt was uh, wet for the rest of the game, but um, fun way to start it off, get the fans involved. Um, there's nothing like playing home at Orchard Park with all these fans watching. You guys built a big first uh, first half lead. One of the highlights was Josh Allen's 52-yard touchdown run. What can you say about the plays he makes every week? <laughs> Sometimes it's fun just being a fan, just watching him do his thing. Um, you know, he could turn a five-yard run into a 30-yard run. Um, any chance, you know, the defense gets him. He's, he's not a big slider. We try to tell him to slide more often, but when he's doing that, no one's going to tell him to slide. Well, I mean, I think we're playing at a comfortable level because of the uncomfortable situations that we've been in this last six, seven weeks. Um, you know, it's almost a, a sense of our breath of fresh air knowing that everybody's in the same position that we are, we've, we have been, you know, win or go home. And um, to be in that situation, like I said, the, the, the dividends that it's going to pay off, um, and I think you kind of saw that tonight of, you know, we were cool, calm, and collected, and nobody, nobody blinked, and we just kind of went out there and did our job, and we're going to need to continue to do that. I'm appreciative of the efforts, um, but it's not mystical. Uh, we didn't do what was required to win tonight. We didn't take care of the ball. We didn't get, it, get the ball from them enough in an environment like this, and thus uh, the score. Mike, you have a year left on your contract. Well, I get the question, but Mike wasn't going to answer that. Well, yeah. look, the Bills won. We'll go to the Steelers in a minute. Yeah. So for Buffalo, this is what, look, they, they have a, this, they've won, what, I think 14 of 16 at home lately, although we saw what a home winning streak with Dallas meant. Sometimes it means nothing. But the Buffalo, but we start with Josh Allen because yeah. he, that was a design run, that one. But there are others. He just, he, he puts, he does, he's kind of Superman. He doesn't, okay, it's cold. I'm the quarterback. I'll take you on. Boom. What have we said all along about this team? Josh Allen needs help until the playoffs come, and then he can put the cape on. Superman can't wear the cape for two and a half hours during the movie, but occasionally <laughs> he, go, he, he goes inside Very the phone booth and he good. puts the cape on, boo. He's six foot five. He's 240 pounds. You got to run him. And when the quarterback runs the football, the defense can't account for him because that's an extra guy running the football. Typically, we don't account for those. So the offense has an advantage. And on top of that, not only does it, do they have an advantage, you got to physically tackle this dude and get him to the ground. So come playoff time, I know you don't want your quarterback to get hit, but he is a, a, a weapon for the Bills offense, and they used him a lot tonight. A, a little aside on the Bills, their, their offensive line, you know, some years in a lot of teams, if you, you're shuffling because of injuries and all. This is their best offensive line in this yes, run, yes, I think, yes, with Josh. Yes. You saw that there, too. They allowed the fewest sacks in football. That doesn't mean that Chris Jones next week, but that's next week, can't come up the middle and, and, and cause them trouble. But they're click. They've had these parts. They, they've had these parts, and you heard what Josh said, but but they have the offensive line is yeah. sharp. Now they have the dual tight ends. You know, Stefan Diggs is always capable. So they're capable of busting out at any time. I think their best is yet to come. No doubt, Boom. And, and, and let's think about a couple situations. One, they fired Ken Dorsey, and they, hired, uh, Joe, they moved Joe Brady to the offensive coordinator. That's number one. Number two, you mentioned the offensive line. They started running the football more. Yes. You count the quarterback plus the running back almost 180 yards rushing tonight. So you got a new play caller who, who's, who's giving the offense life. You got a, a new play caller that wants to run the football. Now the offensive line is saying, oh, we get to come off the ball and hit somebody? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And defensively, boom, they're just good enough. Yeah, they're down to Davis White and Milano and a lot of guys. Yeah. Ed Oliver's playing well up front. You got, you got certain guys that are still there that are able to get after the quarterback. And, and to Floyd, me, Leonard Floyd, yeah. Epin like yeah. those guys are starting to play well. They may not be what they were defensively, but they're just good enough. And this new play caller has given this offense life, more physical, and that offensive line, it's going to be a tough out. No, no, they, they are going to be a tough out, and they're going to be at home next week. And A.J. Klein played two games this year. Yes, yes. Well, now, he was on the Bills a few years, you know, the last yes. few years, but he's fallen away. He, he led the team in tackles on the night. So, Marv Levy told me a long time, Buffalo fans, 
Depth is great <laughs> until you have to use it. That's a good one. <laughs> but you know what? They used yeah. it this evening, and they did. And it worked. Pittsburgh. They like, well, not like Philly. That tackling was atrocious. Right. But, but that's what Mike was as disappointed as it. Yes, the turnovers. Their tackling wasn't the sharpest, huh? Tackling wasn't sh the, the sharpest, and they beat themselves in some situations. That's kind of the small thing. The big picture is this. They have a first-round quarterback who was healthy, who they didn't play in Kenny Pickett. They started a guy, Mason Rudolph, who was, quote-unquote, the high guy. They got two quarterbacks. That means they don't have one. Mm. And so from an offensive standpoint, boom, they're going to struggle. They moved the ball a little bit, but they tried to play around the quarterback and run the football early. Took them a while to get into the game. And I think Mike Tomlin is frustrated. He's been there 17 years. He's got one year left on his deal. Mike is a Hall of Fame coach. I yes, don't know what he's going to do, but I, I, I sense a level of frustration unlike I've seen, bef seen before from him. Well, we'll see. I mean, for us to speculate, of course, this show runs a few days. Nothing's going to happen. There. Absolutely. Well, how not. do we know that? Correct. We don't know that. But he's disappointed. They, let, they got in late. They, they, they remembered who they were. They were running the ball, but, but they, they got too far behind, and it's hard to come back when your bread and butter's running the ball. No doubt about that, it. That, that, yep. That's just yep. the way it works. So kudos to them for making it a ball game, but five out of the six games were two scores or maybe more scores than that. Game balls. What are you looking at, Boog? Well, I'm going back, as you call it, the new sombrero. How about, how about Baker Mayfield? He didn't have a job, and he had to compete for a job. He won the job at home against the Eagles. Boom, he was absolutely outstanding. 22 for 36, 337, three touchdowns, no interceptions. The first Buccaneer quarterback over 300 yards and three touchdowns in a playoff game. He played phenomenally, Boom, and to me, he played with a chip on his shoulder that Jalen Hurst just couldn't muster up throughout the second half of the season. Well, I know it's easy to go quarterbacks, but where else are you going to go? If you wanted to know why no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills, they have Josh Allen <laughs> leading the charge on the stagecoach because he, he threw it. He had the 52 every ran for 74, 21 of 32 or three. It's not about, oh, we could remember it's cold. I mean, yeah. 200 and, and, and a, the Bills played a clean game. Yes. Yes. And there, you know, and, and there you go. Buffalo capable of beating anybody, of course. So are there a couple other teams in the AFC that we'll talk about in a moment. All right, this time now. I know you're waiting for it. ESPN <laughs> bet top performers from today. Duh, Josh Allen, James Cook, outstanding on the ground against the Steelers. Baker Mayfield, Booger just said it. One of his best performances ever in a great year. Devontae Smith, the Slim Reaper, an Eagles playoff record in receiving. In the loss, the ESPN bet is the official sports book of ESPN. Download and sign up today. What a play. That's how I'm supposed to read a billboard right now. Here we go. So we're going to do AFC first. Because chronologically, the first game, and that's our game, on ESPN and ABC, Ravens home to the Texans. They played week one a long time ago. Stroud's first game, 25-9, Baltimore won at the big crab cake. I visited Baltimore this past week. You're going to see an interview with Lamar Jackson this coming week. And then Chiefs at Bills on Sunday night. We, Lamar, Josh Allen, mm -hmm. Patrick Mahomes, they're the best three quarterbacks in football. They're all in the AFC bracket. They're all in the AFC bracket, but there's this, there's this rookie in there. Yeah, yeah. There's this rookie named C.J. Stroudboom, and he might be hotter than any of them. And, and to me, I'm fascinated to see this young Houston team on the road at Baltimore who's been sitting there waiting for two weeks. To me, that game fascinates me because there's not enough memory or past in C.J. Stroud's football data bank for him to be afraid. So he's going to go against there, go in there against the number one defense, and I think he's going to play well. Uh, I think Lamar plays a little bit better. That's going to be a fascinating game. And finally, finally we get to see Patrick Mahomes in a playoff game that is not the Super Bowl on the road. How he performs on the road? I can't wait to find that out. I don't think Andy Reid are worried about it. One thing we know that Andy's mustache, if it's Buffalo, it's going to be like last week in Kansas <laughs> City, like the Mike Holmgren, Brett Favre. But I'm, I'm, I'm dating oh. myself there. The Bills fans are going, we finally, get the, we finally get the Chiefs in here. Yeah. But the Chiefs are going, what well, we're afraid of on the, this game. Now, now this will be talked about all week long. And uh, you're, I think Baltimore, if they get going, you know. Yeah, yeah. Watch out. Well, watch out for the Chiefs. Watch out for the Bills. He already told me to watch out for Houston. All right, now we go to the NFC. Packers off their demolition of Dallas. Hey, congratulations. Where are you going? At the 49ers. Uh, the most playoff uh, matchups of all time. Green Bay and San Francisco has a ring. And that's the Saturday game. And then the early game, Bucks at Lions. They played at the Sombrero in October. Uh, the Lions won. And, and 
that will be a fun and off the charts game. San Francisco, you never know what the buy and resting people in week 18 will do to a team. For the first time in a while, we get to see San Francisco whole and healthy. They have quarterbacks who are healthy and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Green Bay, it's all about their defense. Boom, can their defense show up? It played really well against the Rams, excuse me, against the Cowboys. Can it play good against the 49ers and the Buccaneers? Whichever team plays a cleaner game, whether it be Jared Goff in the Lions or Baker Mayfield in the Buccaneers, up there at Ford Field, I, that's going to be that's going to be a crazy atmosphere. You know what? You know we we did the show last night. And look, we weren't there. We were here. But if you're a football fan, you, when the when the Lions got that first down with a minute and a half to go, and they knew that was it, people were crying. <laughs> yeah. In the stands. I, I I I get it. It's like it's like they're new. It's like my God, what a <laughs> scene! And they said that was the loudest by far they've ever heard in Detroit. Yeah. I think this weekend, coming weekend, will top that. Could get louder. It's a what? Could get louder. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got to do it three times. We're on Saturday and Sunday. Next week for Divisional Round. For Booger, I'm Boomer. Thanks for watching.